Hello, uh, this is, uh, let me see, uh, sixth, sixth remark in a series of remarks entitled Introduction to Business Immorality and Corporate Social Irresponsibility. The sixth remark, the, the fifth, the previous remark was bribery, on bribery and corruption as a typical, um, typical CSI activities. And this one uh, concerns uh, the issue of uh, practical egoism, selfishness, self-interest and business ethics, in fact. So, uh, since I was uh, writing on this, uh, on this uh, issue uh, from different perspectives in, say, last 10-12 years, uh, from philosophical perspective of perspective of philosophical analysis, from perspective of uh, uh, religious analysis, and uh, from perspective of business analysis, uh, I would like to to add something to to the to the, to the last perspective, namely the uh, business aspect of uh, egoism and selfishness and self-interest. Therefore, uh, 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 in the, the most of this remark will, will, will be related to uh, previously published uh, papers on the topic, namely, and mainly uh, regarding the paper Me, Myself and I, Practical Egoism, Selfishness, Self-Interest and Business Ethics, uh, that I wrote in, uh, in co-authorship with Jelena de Beljak. And it was published. It was published 2008, and social responsibility, social responsibility journal. Okay. Uh, now uh, I would like to start with a short summary of, of some things from the paper that I would like to explicate that, and that seem to be uh, quite important for for the present the present issue, namely namely um, emphasizing some elements uh, of this underlying idea or reasoning behind uh, our egoistic or, or, or self-interest directed or selfish practices or actions in fact okay so uh, the first i would like uh, the, to, talk, to say something about the basic problem of pure and enlightened types of egoism. Then uh, uh, I would like to, to, to create, as, as we did in fact in the paper, uh, a kind of argument in favor of the, the, the statement that pure egoism implies moral solipsism and all other uh, uh, types of egoism in fact can be reduced to, to, to pure egoism and uh, this will concern uh, three elements uh, ontological objection, epistemological objection and of course because this, this relation of uh, other types of egoism to the pure type of egoism uh, also a part on, on, on uh, types of egoism uh, and a summary of some different objections that we found. Fourth part will be fourth part uh, this will, the types will be the third part, fourth part will be uh, self-interest, uh, uh, the difference between self-interest and the interest of the self uh, concerning business ethics. And this will be quite short because it's only a conceptual thing. Uh, and now the fifth part will be quite interesting because the same difference between interest of the self and the self-interest will be applied uh, 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 or be explicated in terms of moral perspective uh, on the issue, not just logical, ontological, epistemological, I don't know, but moral, primarily perhaps moral. And finally, in the sixth part, uh, uh, I will say something uh, concerning the uh, Jesus' uh, second uh, commandment, and uh, in seventh part, uh, something about uh, the seventh commandment uh, 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 as a kind of uh, formal background for uh, 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 quite applicable theory of uh, caring, or in fact, uh, but a theory that is manifested by actual 
types of, of, of care that we manifest toward others. Okay, so these are the, uh, the seven parts that will be that will be the parts of the previous of the uh, present remark. Let me start with uh, with the introductory part, which is as I said, basic problem of uh, uh, pure and uh, enlightened egoism. The term egoism is usually, as we uh, wrote, uh, used to address the exclusive concern with satisfying one's own desires, getting what one wants, etc. So basically, egoism can be understood both as presupposing others and not presupposing others. Therefore, this, uh, this basic uh, kind of uh, kind of dichotomy, kind of kind of tension within the concept uh, seems to exist, uh, namely. Uh, if egoism presupposes others and doesn't do it, then there must be something paradoxical concerning the, 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 the concept in question, and perhaps uh, something irrational concerning the practice accompanied uh, 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 with the description of, of the phenomenon, including the concept in question. Okay. Um, uh, what what is what is the point? Uh, uh, the point is that that the, the following, as we said, uh, egoism presupposes others in the manner that it must presuppose others in order to be described as being contrary to others. Well. This, this seems this seems okay. Uh, it is in order to be identified as pure self-interest. At the same time, it excludes others in order to be identified as pure self-interest. So it's not in the first case it's pure in brackets self-interest. In the second case it's pure uh, self in, in brackets interest. So in the first case it's self-interest, and in the second case is pure interest. In other words, egoism must presuppose others in order to, a bit, a bit, to be identified as self-interest uh, and it must exclude others in order to be identified as pure self-interest. Uh, nevertheless, this does not exclude the possibility that an egoist can satisfy the interest of others as the byproduct of the exclusive satisfaction of his or her own interests. But as far as egoism as satisfaction of one's own preferences includes others, it seems to be important whether others are egoists or non-egoists, because if egoism necessarily includes at least some use of others, say in case of uh, scarce resources, which is the most common situation, um, in order to satisfy one's own preferences, in, it then seems that egoism is possibly only is possible only in if most of people are not egoist, since if opposite were the case, then egoists could not satisfy his or her preferences very easily. In fact, and in the case of scarce resources, if others are non-egoists, but for example altruists, utilitarians or pragmatists, an egoist would satisfy his or her preferences much more easily than in the case where others are pure egoists as he or she is. Uh, the other possi second possibility is that egoism does not presuppose the existence of others, at least in some relevant sense, for example, as autonomous, rational, and free moral agents. This will be, this will, uh, be discussed later on. Now, uh, this, this uh, paradox in, within the concept can be resolved uh, or bypassed by, by differing between a pure and enlightened egoism. In the first case, we have enlightened egoism since others exist, but only uh, but they serve uh, as mere means for egoist ends. In the second case, we have pure egoism, which ontologically ends in solipsism, since others do not exist in the same way as the egoist, him or herself. If egoism, in other words, uh, uh, is pure, then it implies solipsism, which can be refuted quite easily, at least from certain ontological and epistemological positions and standpoints. On the other hand, if egoism is enlightened, then it faces an ethical objection which states, uh, at least from some uh, perspectives, moral perspectives, for instance, from Kantian perspective, that its consequences, uh, uh, that its consequence is that an egoist uses others as a means for his/her own ends, while 
he or she should treat others as ends in themselves. Uh, it is uh, arguable that pure egoism is also morally wrong since it, it excludes others on the basis of some relevant features like autonomy, freedom and similar. But is this common understanding uh, of egoism correct or not? Uh, this will be discussed also later on. So uh, we can create a kind of table uh, uh, in which we would have uh, two columns. Uh, one. Uh, 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 others would be egoists, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, others are egoists, and uh, the second, others are not egoists. So, egoists, not egoists, others. And two to, 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 to lines in the first, uh, scarce resources, and the second, non-scarce resources. Therefore, uh, e an egoist uh, uh, it would be very hard for an egoist to satisfy her or his preferences if uh, others uh, are egoists and if resources are scarce while in any other case uh, satisfying preferences for her or him would be quite easy uh, okay uh, let me turn to the second part perhaps uh, uh, theoretically the most important part uh, because it concerns second and the third it cons they concern uh, the, 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 the formal our structure of an argument against uh, uh, egoism, especially against pure egoism. So, uh, what is the, the ontological objection? Uh, pure egoism is stating that one's own interests are not just more valuable than the interests of others, but due to the exclusiveness, it also states, or at least implies, the mentioned interests that mentioned interests are the only valuable interests. Perhaps they are the only interests at all. And if it states that the interests of others are not interests at all, then it seems to imply the ontological position known as solipsism. So uh, this is this is uh, uh, this can be. Uh, 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 this can be uh, 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 linked to some some other uh, elements uh, of, of say applied ontology in, in moral theory. Uh, so one can say uh, uh, is it possible to say others are not moral agents due to th this argument previous argument uh, because it's not about. Uh, the, the solipsist concerning his or her own ontological status claims that he is m more valuable. Uh, he or she claims that uh, he or she is the only valuable thing. There are no lesser interests, interests of lesser importance. His or her interests are the interests. There are no other interests. Okay. Perhaps other interests are not possible at all. Perhaps. Okay. Uh, so it is a question. Uh, uh, it is not a kind of question, at, at pr primarily an ethical uh, argument. It is ontological. It is not about uh, uh, others' regards, uh, should we say, or regarding of others, in regard of others this kind of relation. Previous to that, it seems to be a kind of uh, uh, a relation of uh, inclusion of others. Inclusion or exclusion of others. This is... so... Uh, uh, now, ontologically speaking, solipsism uh, uh, can be refuted on various grounds. Uh, some of which are quite interesting, and uh, among these, some are quite funny. Except, uh, for instance, solipsism cannot be stated consistently, as Bertrand Russell quite clearly pointed out in Human Knowledge, Scope and Limits, uh, uh, because it's impossible even uh, uh, to say something like to state basic statement of egoism. What would be the sentence? My interests are the only interests. What it means in the only. 
like there are others but they are not to be counted as interests or what does it mean mine interests mine there are no others so there's only me there is no sense in saying I have interests or there are the most important interests just there are interests or even not not even that just a list of actual interests it, it's implicit that these are the only interests and there is only uh, one one bearer of this interest one, one person who has them as her or his own interests this is all implied and if it's explicated then it's senseless it's meaningless to say such thing and if you say it if you just spell out a, a, a list of, of interests then what does it mean it is just a list of, list of interest it doesn't say is it a, a list of my interest your interest our interest common interests so it's a very 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 tricky thing to to formulate to spell out basics of, of uh, solipsism huh? so let me turn to uh, epistemological objection uh, it's, it, this is this one is uh, it's connected to ontological of course uh, uh, it, it goes on where ontological uh, objection stops, namely, uh, ontological objection stops, how can you formulate, how can one formulate a solipsist uh, standpoint? Now, uh, uh, epistemological uh, uh, and ontological objections share this, this uh, linguistic, linguistic uh, sphere of, of in which the objection is stated particular way of uh, linguistic analysis of, of the issue of solipsism and uh, uh, epistemological epistemological aspect continues with, with, with this uh, uh, linguistic uh, sphere within this linguistic sphere and uh, tries to answer the question how is egoi egoism formulated actually now uh, the one possibility is that an egoist claims uh, something like the following there is nothing besides my interest. And its final conclusion is, I don't know anything besides my interest. But this is not precise, because there is no sense in saying I or my, since there are no others. Finally, there is something like there are the interests, or the interests themselves, just, just a list of them, a series of interests, ordered in some particular order. Well, even the order is, is questionable, just a pile of interests just a series just 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 a heap something like that and what follows is the list of them or just the list since there can be only interests on the list not some kind of uh, a remark this is the list of interests it's impossible to have such remarks so egoism as moral solipsism uh, which in fact it is uh, becomes more senseless and unacceptable as it becomes more rigorous and logically consistent so this, this is the basis of objection. Let me repeat it. Egoism as moral solipsism becomes more senseless and unacceptable and meaningless as it becomes more rigorous and logically consistent. On the other hand, uh, if, it, if it is less, uh, less uh, logically consistent and, and, and rigorous, then it can be acceptable. But on what grounds? However, solipsist-based objections presuppose that egoism implies solipsism as a radical denial of others, not just as, being, as beings with interests, or generally speaking, valuable beings, but more, more than that, if egoism is moral solipsism, then others are existent as moral agents of the same kind as an egoist, but only as beings of lesser value, or even of no value. Okay. The difference between egoists and others is not in level, is, but it is a differ the difference in kind. Others are not less valuable. Others are not valuable at all. And therefore can be part of uh, egoists' interests. As the result, these objections hold only if egoism implies solipsism and or if egoism is ethical solipsism. Since it is not argued in the literature that it does not, nor, or that is, it is not, and more, uh, more than that, it seems that common understanding confuses 
psychological, ethical, and so-called rational egoism, which we must examine the, the differences within these concepts. Um, so there are uh, descriptive or psychological and normative or ethical ethical uh, types of egoism. Okay. Uh, normative uh, egoism is quite simple. It's it's mostly ethical. There are others. There can be aesthetical also. Religious solipsism. Uh, ethical solipsism claims that it is necessary and sufficient for an action to be morally right, that it maximizes one one's own self interest exclusively. Descriptive egoism uh, 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 branches in two groups, psychological and rational. Psychological claims that each person has but one ultimate aim, her own welfare. Rational, on the other hand, uh, also as a, as, a, as a type of uh, descriptive subtype, says, uh, claims that it is necessary and sufficient for an action to be rational, that it maximizes one's own self-interest. Now, let me turn to psychological. Uh, it can be subjective or objective. In subjective version, uh, it claims that self-interest is what one desires, while in objective uh, version, it claims that self-interest is one's possession of states independently of one's desires. So this is quite uh, important. Now, uh, what about what about an egoism? Let me turn to the fourth uh, uh, part. Uh, uh, egoism or interest of the self and uh, self-interest in, in business ethics. Now, uh, sometimes it is claimed in various, in series of textbooks, uh, introduction to business, introduction to economics, introduction to this and that, you know, this fear, uh, this same kind, same kind of mantra, uh, quoting, quoting Adam Smith and uh, saying something uh, generally, um, it seems that it is generally acceptable concerning the self-interest. And uh, of course, this, this almost, almost common addition that self-interest is not uh, egoism. Well, uh, there is a difference here, and the difference uh, concerns, uh, it's very important for the argument. It concerns the difference between self-interest and interests of the self. Uh, now, interests, uh, self-interest can really be subjective thing, and really it can turn to be complete egoism. I, I wasn't... I wasn't saying idiotism. No, I was just I just said egoism. Okay. While interest of the self is something completely different. Uh, uh, what is the point? The point is even that that uh, some philosophers argue that if we all were egoists in terms of having understanding and accepting and trying to and being capable of of achieving self interest of the, ourselves then it would be, the only rational thing would be to be egoists. While if we, we change uh, uh, interests of the self or uh, self-interest, then this is not so. This is not the case, because self-interests are not necessarily interests of the self, and vice versa. That's it. Okay, now, uh, what about, uh, this is one, one side of this objection. Another side of this objection is, in fact, as I said, a very often quotation, okay, in the last five, five or perhaps ten years, uh, some textbooks uh, like Introduction to Business, uh, to Economics and this and that, are not so strict concerning this Adam Smith and self-interest and invisible hand theory. Okay, are not so clear. Uh, they are not so, 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 so orthodox in these matters. Okay, and now uh, 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 let me turn to, to, to the Smith ideas. What is, in most cases, what is, uh, what is quoted or referred to in such short uh, passages in introduction is a, a quote from, a quote from uh, Wealth of Nations, an inquiry into the nature and causes of Wealth of Nations, uh, 1776, uh, but Quite rarely, uh, uh, another book is quoted, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, uh, uh, decades or, or 15 years uh, uh, earlier. 
And these two books uh, create the so-called Adam Smith problem, which is uh, 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 in quite detail discussed in literature, but I'm not going to enter in this, this issue here. Uh, what is the problem? The basic problem is that that uh, let me let me let me quote something. Uh, uh, let me see the what an example of textbook introduction to business. Okay. The primary driving force of capitalism is self-interest, not the interest of the self. Self-interest. Each economic unit attempts to do what is best for itself. An entrepreneur, workers, consumers, in brief capitalism, presumes self-interest as modus operandi for the various economic units as they express their free choices. The motive of self-interest given gives direction and consistency to what might otherwise be an extremely chaotic economy. A cha word chaotic is, is used. So, so this is order. Any other solution is complete chaos. This ideological thing. Pure uh, pursuit of self-interest should not be confused with selfishness. This is almost on a regular basis added in every ad, uh, added in every such uh, uh, introductory remark on on on, on egoism and self-interest and Adam Smith and, and Invisible Hand in, in most textbooks. Okay. Now, what is the issue? The issue is that. Uh, we have different uh, statements in Adam Smith. For instance, in Wealth of Nations, uh, we have accepting only self-interest and rejecting, this is one position, that one, one group of, 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 of researchers of Smith's uh, philosophy and economic theory and whole opus claim that uh, they only accept what is said on self-interest in wealth of nations and completely reject uh, what is said about it previously in theory of moral sentiments, claiming um, in, in at least half of them claim that this is kind of development he, he's taught, okay, and uh, changing the perspective, giving, uh, uh, drawing conclusions based on completely different arguments, okay. And now we have uh, uh, opposite position, which says uh, theory of moral sentiments. Uh, moral sentiments is completely right on this point, and it should be quoted in each such case, as, uh, exam as for example, in such textbooks. Accepting uh, so, this group of authors uh, accept only theory of moral sentiments uh, uh, as a, a way of crit criticism of criticism of arguments in, in uh, Wealth of Nations. Uh, and a kind of affirmation of economic role of benevolence. Uh, Etzioni, 88, Collard, 1978, Lutz and Lux, 1988. Now, we have uh, uh, acceptance of both. This is the majority of authors. They accept both. They accept uh, 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 theories of moral sentiments and uh, wealth of nations. Well, they accept it in at least in two two ways, at least perhaps more, but perhaps this all this can be grouped into groups. Okay, one group uh, accepting both uh, egoism and benevolence, uh, so wealth of nations and the theory of moral sentiments theories, uh, as economic realism. This is this is uh, this is claimed by Becker, 1989, Rosenberg, 1990, Mini, 1972. The other group. Accepting both as a sign of complete system. Halbronner, uh, 1982, West, 1969, Morrow, 1928, Rosenberg, 1960, and Cropsey, 1975. Uh, uh, there are even papers that summarize all this compli quite complicated discussion concerning uh, Anna Smith. So the point is that there is no, there is no clear a way of grounding uh, self-interest uh, in, in economic theory, because the very the very beginning, the very source, is confusing Adam Smith, and previous to that, as I said, uh, the difference in between self-interest and interest of oneself 
uh, are things that should be deferred and if we defer them then uh, we can say that uh, interest of oneself has a kind of primacy over self-interest if one is in a particular situation, daily situation, if one uh, should choose between these two or this particular uh, two particular ways of uh, ac action uh, in which each of these ways should should uh, fall under self-interest or interest of the self. Uh, now, the formula that is uh, mostly spelled out in such introductory parts of uh, such uh, economic textbooks is in fact the following. The formula is quite simple. The formula says maximization of profits plus rational choice plus direct or indirect selfishness. Now, the, the word selfishness is used never. Self-interest, sometimes, self, but egoism never. It's often also, as, as I quoted, claimed that uh, self-interest uh, is not to be confused with even with selfishness and God forbid with egoism. These are two completely different things. Well, uh, uh, I will, we will claim we claimed in this paper that this is the same thing. And so the formula uh, equals economic self-interest. Now I will I will skip all this uh, uh, analysis of this formula and turn to the fifth uh, section. Uh, now let me turn. Uh, let us leave uh, historical analysis of Adam Smith and con the contemporary debates, and let us turn to the first part of our objection, which says that self-interest and interest of the self are not the same thing. Now let us look this, uh, at this difference from the moral perspective. So what is the moral perspective here? Uh, uh, this is quite important. Uh, uh, let me start with, 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 with the difference uh, which says the following. Why it is unacceptable in the first case to say, or in any case, to say it is just medicine or it is just architecture. And it seems to be acceptable in the second case to say it is just business. There is no obvious reason, or stated other way around, why is, why is it acceptable in the first case to say it is obvious case of misconduct and immoral action, for instance in medicine or in architecture, but it seems to be unacceptable in the second case, in the case of business. Once again, there is no uh, clear reason. Um, because business is, in fact, a name of series of professions, like 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 being an architect or being a medical doctor, are professions. So it should be possible to 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 to, to say that that uh, to state something like to utter a sentence. It is obvious case of misconduct and immoral action. And what cases? Which which types of cases? Well. Uh, types of cases of pure, uh, 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 achieving pure self-interest in the case of uh, an architect or in the case of uh, a medical doctor as well as in the case of accountant or market researcher or manager, etc. etc. Uh, now, uh, there is important distinction here. Since the principal motive, namely in business, is self-interest, as said, uh, in these uh, introductions, and in other profession, it seems to be an interest of the self. The difference here is substantial, and it concerns the difference in perspective. Uh, we argue that it is a moral perspective, uh, but moral perspective as being uh, difference in uh, function or in context, not in substance. Uh, since what an egoist lacks is just a perspective, an egoist doesn't, he or she does not lack uh, any kind of substantial uh, uh, insight. Uh, an egoist is not m m greater or lesser human being or person. He, he or she just lacks a, a kind of perspective on, 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 on things, on situations, on issues. Not, nothing more. An acceptance of certain naive consequence. There are others, or other selves, in fact, uh, and they have their 
interests and goals in themselves as well as I do. There is also an even stronger consequence. There are selves, and they're sometimes common, sometimes unique and idiosyncratic perhaps, uh, interests that should be recognized for their own sake. In words of uh, German philosopher Hans Georg Gadamer, the first insight is quite, si quite simple. Quoting, uh, to acquire a horizon means that one uh, learns to look beyond what is close at hand, not in order to look away from it, but to see it better within a larger whole and a truer proportion. So what one who identifies interests of the self or reduces, in fact, interests, uh, uh, interests of the self, reduces them on self-interests, really lacks is moral perspective. This moral perspective, uh, perspective, on the other hand, is that which will lead him or her toward recognition and inclusion of the other. If businessmen are practically selfish, and if this is the only way to be financially successful, then a business, if it is financially sustainable, must violate the human rights of the others. In other words, it is incompatible with the requirement of, uh, of being environmentally friendly and socially responsible as they suggested in uh, a Green Paper of European Commission promoting the European Framework for Corporate Social Responsibility 2001. Uh, now, th this, this is the, the basic argument. And now, let me return. If this moral perspective is, is, uh, is okay, then we, we cannot reduce self-interest to interest of the self. Uh, interest of the self is, is obviously uh, is obviously more uh, more clearer notion than the self-interest and self-interest and uh, other interests uh, can be subsumed under the interest of the self. Now, if this is okay and if uh, uh, it is not clear that we can ground uh, self-interest as one of the elements of formula. Of, of uh, capitalism as a completely clear concept without any, any uh, com consistent and, and without any kind of, of paradox uh, or, or contradiction within it, uh, which is not the case because there are problems with uh, Adam Smith's uh, criterion of uh, self-interest, <coughs> uh, then perhaps uh, we cannot have any kind of consistent concept of of moral solipsism and uh, of egoism, egoism as kind of moral solipsism. And moral solipsism is a solipsism, and there are important objections which end up in a conclusion that we cannot even formulate the basic statement of, of, of solipsism without making, uh, without creating a paradox, which we cannot solve. Therefore, uh, the whole idea should be, should, uh, should be changed or at least modified. Uh, our suggestion is that, that we should modify it in a way that we replace self-interest with interest of the self. However, interest of the self still, as such, as being higher, more general phenomenon or concept than self-interest or other interests, which are lower, still implies these paradoxes. Now, this relation of self-interest and other interest, this, this kind of uh, collision or, or even perhaps a, a serious problem that should be tested, uh, needs some clarification. Our idea is that that, uh, 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 that we should inv one should investigate the, the relation between uh, the purest forms of egoism and altruism. Now, if you have a, 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 a the purest forms of egoism and altruism, then they show all the all the all the all the lacks of, of consistent 
uh, conceptual understanding of any concepts. And, and they show a very, 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 very clear signs of their paradoxical nature. And what is the paradoxical nature of uh, egoism and altruism taken in their radical forms and solely without referring to the opposite uh, uh, phenomenon? Uh, well, uh, it, is, it is quite simple. Uh, uh, pure or radical form of egoism is paradoxical, in, it's, it's, it's contradictory in itself, because it is impossible to, to, to understand the concept and it is impossible to act upon it. While uh, altruism is a different uh, issue. Now, uh, altruists, uh, in this moral perspective in terms of view, uh, for, uh, moral perspective uh, view, uh, or from the view of this moral perspective of the issue, needs others in order to act morally correct. Because the only thing, the only way to, to do something that is morally right is to do uh, things that are going to create benefits toward others exclusively. Opposite to the egoist, or egoism as, as moral solipsism, which says uh, we should, one should perform in a way that that one is one creates benefits as consequences of one's actions, benefits toward him or herself exclusively. So creating even accidentally benefits toward others is wrong. And in a case in a case of altruism, creating. Uh, 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 Creating benefits, even accidentally benefits toward toward uh, uh, oneself, is also morally wrong. Uh, but it seems that this is impossible to 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 exclude. There's always the possibility that one will create benefits toward uh, others if one acts like in, ego, in egoistic terms, and that uh, one will create benefits toward uh, her or himself if one acts. Uh, only with the idea to, to create benefits exclusively uh, to, to the others. Now, egoism, as the, in theory, or as a model, is it has a serious problems, which, in our opinion, can be solved easily. But in practice, it also creates a series of, of problems sometimes uh, moral problems, and so so the altruism as well, because in theory, altruism in fact is, is, is a situation in which one cannot understand her or himself as a real, authentic moral agent, because everything he or she is depends on others. And this, this psychological or ontological and epistemological as well layer uh, has an underlying layer which is in fact moral, which is I cannot identify myself as a moral agent without others. Now, if an altruist, you know, is left on, on a, or found her, her or himself on a deserted island, uh, the altruists will commit a suicide. Why? Because there are no others. So altruist is completely, radical altruist, completely defined ontologically, epistemologically and morally uh, by others. While egoist, on the other hand, is completely defined in the same way uh, by his own or her own interests. And the problem is that there is no him or her, they are just interests, they don't belong to anybody. There is no moral agent, again, as well as authentic moral agent, as well as in uh, uh, altruism. Now, the idea, our idea, is to confront these two and to combine them. Then they make sense. And the idea is, okay, there are various versions of this, we are just uh, quoting this one because it's, I mean, it's part of our European culture. So we quote uh, 
uh, New Testament, Matthew 22, 39. Uh, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, now, this 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 quite uh, known sentence uh, by Jesus is differently uh, described and differently uh, in interpreted. Let me let me uh, 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 just say that mention that the uh, that Catholics and Reformed Christians agree that there is no. Uh, 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 affiliation of this, this, uh, or, or any any kind of implicit, even even implicit mention of self-love, as any kind of uh, uh, criterion. Uh, but uh, there are other interpretations as well. Now. Let us leave aside these theological theological debates and let us turn to the content of, of the saying. So what he said seems to be that we should be altruists measured by our egoism. And vice versa. We should be egoists measured by our altruism. On one side, one who cannot love him or herself surely cannot love others. On the other side, one can love him or herself only by loving others. This kind of radical altruism seems strange, almost as radical egoism. In both cases, as I explained uh, previously, in both cases, uh, a self is completely defined by others. In the first case, by serving others, and in the second case, by using others for egoistic purposes. But the fact is that there are selves with their interests as a self-assertion. Even in orthodox reading of the commandment, the fact is that each and every one of us loves him herself, and if so, it is. Uh, and if it is so, then this seems to be a good measure for one love toward others in terms of proportionality. But this is not inconsistent with the fact that every average human being has self-regard, has self-regards as well as others' regards in certain proportion. In this way, it seems to be. A strong realistic position. The question is, which proportion, in fact, which proportion is morally acceptable? As far as we can see, Jesus commands that one-on-one -on -one is an acceptable proportion. In this way, it seems to be a really realistic position. So, if we have two scales from 1 to 10, where one scale is for egoism and the other is for altruism, with 1 being the lowest quantity and quality and 10 being the highest quantity and quality of self-love and others' love, then Jesus commands that proportions like 1-1 one, one, or 5-5 five, five, and 10-10, ten, ten, for example, are morally acceptable. And proportions like 5-1, 1-5, 3-8, 7-4, etc., are morally unacceptable. However, it does not say that the 10-10 proportion is more acceptable than 5-5, for example. Radical egoism 5 to 1, for example, as well as radical altruism 1 to 5, for example, is excluded by the commandment according to the, our interpretation. In fact, this quantitative interpretation is probably, and also according to some commentators, what Smith's idea regarding the rules, in fact, was. Uh, uh, as was a comment in, uh, ex explicated in Black 2006, and uh, he refers to West uh, 1969. This interpretation can also be quite consistently, consistently uh, connected to the Golden Rule. Since the 20th century, the Golden Rule has commonly uh, uh, signed the ethical maxim, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, Matthew 7, 12 and Luke 6, 31. The descriptive terminology is not quite modern, but it had an antecedent in the expression golden law used in the maxim as early as 1674 onwards. So reciprocity is quite important, and why shouldn't it be also important in the second commandment as well? If it is, then they fit nicely together and explicate in which way egoism and self-regard should be understood, accepted and practiced in its everyday context, private or public, business or otherwise now the last the last point is that uh, that we are going to that i'm going to explicate here uh, that this implies uh, uh, of course not directly it, it should be 
and it will be in, in further remarks it will be explicated a particular relation uh, toward toward practice namely in which way this these ratios 1 1 5 5 10 10 uh, of 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 uh, uh, mixture of uh, egoism and altruism, even radical ones, uh, their, their forced mixture uh, can be applied in, in day, daily practice. It can be applied in a way that uh, this mixture can be analyzed in terms of, of, of care. So ethics of care uh, is is quite uh, applicable in uh, on this matter. Uh, uh, of course, uh, in ver there are various uh, series of books and, 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 and ideas concerning the ethics of care, and I'm not going to, to enter this here. And But this will be explicated later on. So ethics of care is perhaps one of the possible ways uh, by which uh, this mixture of, of uh, altruism and egoism can be uh, put into practice, into daily life, as, as a kind of uh, <clears throat> rational, rational, uh, rational grounding or rational justification of of uh, of our actions. Okay. Uh, okay. And for for the ending, uh, 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 uh. oh, in fact, this is it. I would not. This discussion about ethics of care is not the topic of the present note, so I will skip this. And uh, so, let me summarize uh, what what was the what was uh, done here. Uh, and what is the connection of this to CSI? Well, the connection seems to be, in my opinion, obvious. The connection is that uh, CSI is often uh, detected and revealed uh, within a company, within a, within a society, and then it is judged in different ways. And by those who uh, performed uh, CSI, there's from time to time a kind of uh, justifications in terms of uh, uh, quoting principles of capitalism, of free, free, uh, free economy, uh, free market system, uh, self-interest, quoting Adam Smith, this and that uh, are, 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 are mentioned, and as, 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 as if these, these are commonly understood and known without any problem. As I as I try to explicate, there are problems, serious problems, and such such remarks on, on especially on egoism, on self interest, on Adam Smith, and on moral correctness of, of, of such approach uh, will not do. They raise serious uh, formal, logical, ontological, epistemological, and moral, more to that ethical. Uh, ethical uh, issues and, and, and problems that cannot be solved easily, and we cannot uh, 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 we cannot say that these are obvious things that that we should just mention and that's it. It's not the case. It's not the case. Uh, so CSI actions cannot be justified or grounded. In egoistic on egoistic ethics or egoistic morality, as well as and perhaps this is a funny consequence, as well as uh, CSR actions can be justified by on the grounds of pure or radical altruistic morality and ethics. So this is not the point. The approach is still simple and clear. Yet. It consists of two aspects. This mixture consists of two aspects. Of the particular ratio between self-interest and interests of the self. Self-regard and others' regard. Altruism and egoism. And this is, um, um, this, this seems to be 
some kind of normal, standard, common thing that we do on a daily basis when we consider uh, reasons for our actions, at least uh, such reasons, uh, such situations in actions, or concerning actions that we need to reason. And even, even, even in, 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 in different situations, for example, even in situations when, I don't know, we act uh, based on, on habit or, or habits are justified in most cases by the simple fact that they are morally justified, that they create some kind of benefit to ourselves and to others as well, in some kind of particular uh, ratio, that's it. They try to escape the pure self-regard or the pure uh, others' regards or pure self-interest, pure se uh, others' interests and, and interests of the self. Okay, they, they try to escape that because they try what, what they are good for. The, 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 the possibility and the existence of habit is in fact uh, 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 Important because it it, it makes uh, survival much more probable. Therefore, it, it 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 creates benefits to individuals and the whole group at the same time by this particular same action, same habit. And this is the idea. So, like concerning these types of human action, if these are actions, this is also an issue for debate habits as actions. Yeah. But in other uh, types of human actions or human actions, if habits are not actions, then uh, uh, reasoning based on, on egoism have serious problems. Okay, and this is the remark. So it's, uh, this is the relation between this, this criticism of egoism and self-interest and related, related mentioned uh, uh, concepts and phenomena as justifications, as perhaps rationalizations that we create in order to, to fool others or and or ourselves uh, as being uh, rational people, we have serious reasons for what we are doing. No, we have not. We don't have any kind of uh, consistent good reasons. These reasons are not good. Perhaps we have different reasons, but if we have these reasons, they are not good reasons, they are bad reasons. Okay, that's it. Thank you. And this was the uh, sixth remark concerning egoism. And let me see. The next remark would be the next remark uh, would be uh, would be on the acquiring uh, CSR activities. And uh, because we end here, we ended here with kind of self-deception of rationalization of ways that we uh, that we try to, to, to convince ourselves that we are right, that we have good reasons, but we do not have them. And uh, uh, we are deceiving ourselves. And in the next uh, remark, we will try to explicate at least one small aspect or layer of the issue. How should we or how can we move from this from this deceptive aspect on <coughs> CSI uh, as deception toward CSI as some kind of authenticity uh, first and foremost authenticity is uh, uh, existential ontological and epistemological uh, phenomenon uh, uh, and concept and further on also as uh, moral moral concept okay this is it thank you very much and this hat and this this t-shirt uh, i should mention was uh, my congratulations to the members of pink floyd because this year is their 40th anniversary of uh, album dark side of the moon well congratulations guys